Welcome into this week's Facebook Live presented by Mercedes-Benz. I'm Madeline Burke and I'm joined this week by Shane Lemieux. Shane, first of all, that picture that we had promoing you seems like an old one. You got the mustache, the facial hair going on now. You're, you're all grown up in your rookie year of, your, of the NFL. Yeah, I'd say it's kind of a glow up. That was it looked like a while ago. I still got that on some of my uh, pictures of my name tag and stuff. And people say that looks like you. <laughs> or, that doesn't look like you. I'm like, no, that's not me. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta appreciate the glow up coming in here, and and especially these past few weeks getting the start. What has it been like for you, kind of thrust into that starting role? Uh, it's been good. You know, I think um, I've kind of embraced the role. Uh, and, back, you know, I just want to do the best I can for my teammates in this team and put us in the best situation possible to win. So uh, it's, it's definitely different, you know, especially going from getting, you know, a few reps a game to getting all of the reps. It's uh, it's a lot different. But, you know, I'm just taking it one play at a time, one game at a time, getting better every day. And I just want to remind you fans watching as well, ask your questions for Shane in the comment section below, and we'll take some of the best ones and I'll ask him for you. Um, but obviously, Shane, the Giants have had one positive COVID case this year, and it was in that O-line room. What was that experience like for you guys going through it and kind of making those adjustments? Yeah, you know, we woke up and uh, we got a text saying to stay in, basically, because um, we had a positive case. We didn't know who it was necessarily or what happened, but uh, we had that one day off where we had six or seven guys out for the day. Uh, so we went all virtual, and uh, the guys here that were still in the building that were doing a heck of a job getting prepared for, prepared for practice. Um, going into that week, we had a, you know a short week missing that one day, uh, but we we did what we could over Zoom, and then we got in, into the building. We really got to work and dialed in on our opponent. Um, a little different earlier on in the week, but once we got going, it was it was just a normal game week. And now you, as you mentioned, you went from having a couple reps a game to getting most of them, and as Will works his way back to health it looks like coach is going to be kind of using a rotation. How does that work and how does that affect the chemistry of the unit as an O-line? You know, I think it's just uh, giving everybody opportunity to perform and then uh, getting everyone, you know, used to playing next to each other, whether it's Will and Will and Andrew, me and Andrew, me and Matt Pert, uh, getting guys to get some chemistry going uh, down the stretch. And also, I think keeping us fresh in those early or those longer runs in games, it's, it's going to be really beneficial. And uh, we're starting to get some questions from the fans here, so I'm going to throw a couple of those your way. Marshall wants to know, who was your, what was your favorite football team growing up? Uh, the Giants. Really? No, I, a grew, Washington I grew up kid. in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like the Seahawks. But I, I like the Giants. When the Giants played in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, I was a total Giants fan, so I remember that. I got a, a, Giants, birth, or a Giants cake for the Super Bowl party, so... Big Giants fan. <laughs> love that. Love that. Um, James wants to know, was there a lineman that you looked up to growing up, or was there a favorite player that you had? Um, I'd say probably Kyle Long, just because he went to Oregon, and he had a really good career with the Bears. I liked I liked watching him play. He's physical. Um, and that's that's probably the, the biggest guy I'd probably. And Max Unger, he also went to Oregon. So a couple of Oregon guys that, that uh, went on to the NFL are kind of guys I looked up to. When you were young, did you always know you wanted to go to Oregon to play college ball? Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I had an idea that I wanted to go to Washington just because it was the in-state school. They never offered me and they never gave me the opportunity to go there. So I got to go to Oregon and uh, got to got to get after them a little bit. Pac-12 still still a solid conference. As someone who went to Arizona State, I can recognize the conference of champions right there. Um, Hayden there wants go. to know, what's the hardest transition been for you from college ball to pro? Um, probably the speed of the game. The speed of the game is a lot faster. Uh, linebackers play a lot faster. Um, and everyone on the field is an elite player. You know, everyone on the field was, was the guy in college. So um, there's no, there's no drop off. You know, there's not really any weaknesses in defenses like there is in college where you can attack. Um, you have to be ready for every single person on, on the field. How has the way that you prepare for games changed from when you were in college to now at the professional level? Um, just, I think, I think preparing for individual defensive linemen um, is is more of an emphasis in the NFL rather than what it is for uh, basically like a college. In college, I feel like defensive line coaches kind of teach the same techniques for every single player on their defensive line. Where uh, in the NFL, everyone I think has a little bit more. Um, freedom to do what they want and every single defense alignment has like a different pass rush move they like to use. Yeah, that's true. You got to kind of get to know guys' tendencies as you're going up against them. Um, Carla wants to know who is your favorite player of all time? I know we asked you who you looked up to growing up, but is there a favorite player of all time that you've got? Hmm. 
Um, it's a tough one. I I really liked uh, Matt Hasselbeck and Sean Alexander growing up on that Super Bowl team. Uh, I really liked uh, Lofa Tatupu. He was uh, he was one of my one of my favorite players growing up. I had his jersey. Uh, and then guys, you know, Sean Alexander, like I said, I like Jerome Bettis for the Steelers back in the day. Um, so yeah, those kind of guys. I like those. I love it. You know, one of uh, our Giants two-time Super Bowl champion uh, lineman, David Deal, he was also a fifth-round draft pick and also wore number 66. And he's always been like, that's my guy because of that solidarity as well. Have you had a chance to kind of chat with him at all? I know it's very different this year with COVID. Yeah, I think I've had a couple interactions with him over social media. Uh, but other than that, I've kind of seen him from afar. I remember one day in training camp, I had to run a lap for a, a false start penalty, and he was yelling at me saying, 66s don't run laps. <laughs> uh, that's really the only interaction I have with him. But I, I can't wait, you know, when this, all this COVID stuff gets over with, I have more interactions with him. Absolutely. Now, when you're in that O-line group, I mean, you guys are rotating in and out together. You guys are building this chemistry, not just as a, a five-person line, but as a whole unit. What's your relationship like with these guys? Is there, is there somebody on this team that you're closest with? You know, I think every offensive line in America, you know, on every single team is a really close, tight-knit unit. Um, and it's, it's the same thing here, whether it's, whether it's you know, me and Nick, uh, me and Andrew. Uh, the biggest thing, I think, has been, you know, getting these game reps with them and seeing, you know, fighting through adversity and uh, in practice and training camp, going, going through adversity every single day with these guys kind of builds a relationship you can't really match, you know, outside of football. Uh, you know, I can't wait for our relationships to grow more. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cool with everyone on the O-line. I'm, I'm just happy to be here with these guys. It's a really good, good group. Outside of football, do you guys have anything that you do to kind of keep in touch away from the field? Are you a big gamer or is there some sort of like virtual uh, meetup that you guys do? Obviously, there's some limitations with uh, cur current circumstances. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think usually in a normal year, year we'd probably go to O-line dinner once a week. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that with th this year and the circumstances, but a lot of the guys in the O-line were really into Call of Duty, uh, the video games, so we'll get on and play together. And, you know, just building, just building chemistry outside of the field is a really big deal, whether it's watching extra tape outside, outside of the building or playing video games. It's, it's cool kind of picking each other's brain because there's always conversations about football somewhere, even if it's on Xbox. Yeah, and not having those rookie dinners every or t unit dinners every week is probably saving you some money as a rookie, I'm sure, right? <laughs> That's, that's true. So that's very true. The silver lining here. That's absolutely. Um, Richard wants to know do you prefer pancakes or waffles? <laughs> Ooh, uh, waffles. Waffles, probably. Waffles. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Craig wants to know is there someone that you emulate your style after? I know earlier in this conversation we talked about some of those Oregon guys like Kyle Long. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, probably that one. Um, is there, a, is there a song or a, like a hype up ritual that you have before a game? Uh, I'm a big heavy metal guy, so I like heavy metal music. Um, not particularly, a, I don't really have a favorite song, but I, I really like Metallica, uh, Pantera, stuff like that. That's kind of my pregame pump up music. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I know you're a big outdoorsman also, hunting, fishing. Do you have any uh, excursions planned for the upcoming bye week? Uh, no, because we have, you know, COVID testing in-house, so it'll kind of be hard, you know, going somewhere around here. Uh, but, you know, hopefully this offseason I get some opportunities to go out. What is the most interesting thing that you've caught, whether it be hunting or fishing, or like the biggest uh, catch you've had? I caught, I caught like a 120-pound sailfish in Mexico a few years ago. That was pretty wild. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I, yeah, sturgeon, sturgeon in uh, Portland, downtown Portland, I caught a – about a eight foot sturgeon it was pretty sweet when you're bringing in a fish that big how long does it take or, or what kind of a fight is that yeah so sturgeon especially they they are in the bottom of lakes deep down there so you really got to pull them up off the bottom they don't like coming up so uh the eight footer it probably took a good 45 minutes just to pull it up and uh, it's it's heavy. My arms were tired, and it's you got to really work through that. See, and I couldn't pass the pole. It's kind of a rule. Me and my buddies, we won't let people pass poles. So you got to reel in the whole thing by yourself. So that was that was tough. But once it gets up, it's all worth it. That's that good like strength building exercise, though. Keeps you in condition in the off season, I'm sure. That's um, true. That's you know, true. you got to stay strong. You got to stay tough. Uh, we've got a couple more questions from some fans. Tommy wants to know, did you always want to be an O-lineman growing up, or did you play any other sports that you loved? 
Um, you know, I was a big wrestler in high school, um, but I, I always knew that kind of offensive line was probably where I was going to end up. Growing up, I was I was kind of a skinny, lanky kid. I was really tall, but I really fell out like earlier on in high school, my freshman year. Uh, but when I started packing on the weight naturally, it came and um, my dad always kind of pushed me to the way of going offensive line. And once I once I kind of learned like you know, it's not all about scoring touchdowns. You can you can almost be physical and beat people up on the offensive line. I, I kind of was attracted more to that. Yeah, Coach Judge has described you as a nasty player. I'm sure you lean into that description pretty well. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to think so. Yeah. Or Orlando wants to know what is your favorite song? I know we talked about that heavy metal Metallica. Is there one song that if you hear it before a game, you're like, that's it. I'm ready to go run through a wall. Uh, Wherever I May Roam by Metallica. There you that's, go. That's the last song I listen to every every game. There you go. It's a classic right there. <laughs> Metallica. Yeah, it's classic. And <laughs> I mean, it's no Enter Sandman, but it works. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, Shane yeah. Lemieux, thank you so much for joining us this week on Facebook Live presented by Mercedes. And good luck this weekend against the Eagles. Thank you. Appreciate it.